Microsoft just released a brand new version of Copilot. It's called Copilot Pro. It's a paid subscription from Microsoft. And in this video, I wanna show you exactly what this Copilot Pro is, exactly how to access it, some hidden things that I found through reading the fine print and some practical ways of using it. So if you go to copilot.microsoft.com, this is where you could access Copilot. I'm not even signed in yet, but this is just a chatbot here powered by the latest version of ChatGPT basically. And this used to be called Bing Chat. It's been around for some time now. But there is a new version called Copilot Pro, which is basically this Copilot, but has a bunch of new options that I wanna show you here. So this is another page from the Microsoft website. I'll put this in the description below this video. So let me show you what this is. This is a $20 a month subscription, but this is for individual users. So Copilot actually had a business version or enterprise version that needed 300 licenses minimum before, and that was $30 a month. This is a whole different thing, and you just need to purchase one for one person here to get started. And here are some of the differences between the regular Copilot, the one that I just showed you, and Copilot Pro. So Copilot Pro gives you access to GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo during peak hours. This still says you could access GPT-4 during non-peak hours on the regular Copilot. But I did hear some rumors that they may be removing GPT-4 altogether from the free version. But again, just rumors right now, Microsoft is not saying that on this website. With Copilot Pro, you also get a whole lot more usage of Dolly with fast generation. So you could do 100 boosts per day. Boosts are basically creating images inside of Copilot using Dolly much faster. The free version is now 15 per day. Now, most importantly, with Copilot Pro, this is the main reason you may want to upgrade. You get access to Copilot inside of Microsoft 365 apps. So inside of Word, inside of Excel right now, inside of PowerPoint, Outlook, you get Copilot built into that. This is the main reason you may want to upgrade. This is the same thing they had in the business version of it too. And on the same page, they did answer a bunch of questions. For example, where is Copilot available right now? Here's the list of countries they roll it out to on the first day. So make sure you check back here to see if it's available in your country. How can you buy Copilot? Well, there's a website link. This is gonna bring you back to the same page. I'm gonna sign up here in real time. And a couple of things that I had to read this fine print for to find out. You need a Microsoft 365 personal or family subscription. So that basically gives you Office 365, Word, Excel, and things like that. So you do have to pay for that. If you have it through your work as a business plan, this is different. This is not gonna get you that. If you have the business version of Microsoft Copilot, you need this other thing here, which again, this is one of the pages I'll link to. This is Microsoft Copilot for Office 365, $30 a month, requires annual commitment. This is the business and enterprise version. A whole different thing here. For some reason, they name it the same, a little bit confusing, but the one I've been showing you is for individual users. Even if you have the family subscription to Office 365, I have the family subscription, you still have to buy Copilot per each person. So I'm just gonna buy it for me. Everyone else in my family plan is not gonna just automatically get that. Okay, to sign up for Copilot Pro back on this page, I'm gonna press Get Copilot Pro. Then it's gonna either bring you to this page to pay if you're logged into your Microsoft account or it's gonna ask you to log into your personal Microsoft account. I'm gonna go ahead and pay. Once you get Pro, you should see Copilot Pro right here. And if you haven't used this before, Basically, every time you give it a prompt here before it gives you a response, you could actually choose a conversation style. They have three different styles and you could see some are more imaginative like this creative mode, precise is more straightforward and by default it's on balance. And if you wanna select between the different GPT models, if you go to the creative mode, you have that option. You could use GPT-4 and click the slider to use GPT-4 Turbo. These other options don't have that and they just use the default version. And in their promo video, they also have something called Copilot GPTs, which I still don't have access to. I have plugins available here that I could turn on and off, but I still can't access GPTs or build them, but that is coming soon. So check up here to look for custom GPTs inside of Copilot. 
Let me test this out with a quick prompt, create an image of a blue robot walking in the middle of a busy New York City street. And this took maybe five seconds, really fast image generation here. You gave me four different options here. I could download it, I could customize it, which opens up Microsoft Designer. That's a whole different app they have that lets you customize these things, I could share it. Now, let me show you the real power of Copilot Pro because it really takes place inside of this Microsoft 365, the Microsoft apps, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, if you come to account.microsoft.com, it's gonna show you right here if you have a subscription to Microsoft Individual or Family. You do need that so you could get Word and Excel. I'm assuming you already have that. And then you'll see Microsoft Copilot Pro here in that account. I did make a mistake I wanted to point out so you don't make the same mistake. I signed up for Copilot Pro under the wrong email that didn't have my Microsoft 365 family plan. If you do that, you still get Microsoft Copilot Pro, but you don't get it inside of the Microsoft apps. You just get the Copilot website that I just showed you. So don't make that mistake. I just had to pay twice to make this video under two different Microsoft accounts. One of them did not have access to Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint. Now, let me show you what Microsoft Word could do with Copilot Pro. Go to office.com slash apps and make sure you install apps here. If you don't have them on your computer, you could use them online as well. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, they all have access to this Copilot Pro now. A little bit limited right now in Excel. It's more like in beta in Excel, but a full-blown release on the other apps. So I've already updated my app, so let me launch Word. So here inside of Microsoft Word, you could use Copilot a couple of different ways. And if you don't see this on your Microsoft Word, you most likely need to update yours or reinstall Word. But if you select any text in Word, you'll get this little Copilot icon. If you click it, it has an option to rewrite with Copilot, which doesn't take any prompts. It just goes and rewrites it. It could visualize things as a table. So if you select text like this, obviously this doesn't make sense as a table, but it will turn it into the table right here, visualizing as a table. And here's the table we got. Obviously it doesn't make sense for this kind of text, but you get the idea on the two different options you have over here. But you also get a new icon up here, right here. It says Copilot. If you click this, it opens a whole window here on the right side of your Microsoft Word. And one of my favorite things so far to do with this Copilot is summarize this document. It just has one click prompting here and you do have a prompt box. So I don't like the selecting and just clicking the rewrite option. It was a little bit glitchy even right now when I was testing it out. The table option is useful. But this is really where you want to use Copilot is this window here on the side. And you could just write from scratch. So it says write about, summarize, ask about this document. So you could have a conversation back and forth conversation using this chatbot here on the Copilot side. Again, this is powered by GPT-4 right now. And I'm assuming it's always going to get the latest version of GPT here to power it in the background. Okay, here we go. So it's starting to give us the main ideas in bullet point formats. And I did read through this real quick and it's pretty good. And it gives references to different parts of the document that I could click to jump into that section of the document. So really useful and you could copy it from here and you could go ahead and revise anything else you wanna see over here. And you could always go ahead and click this view prompt icon and you could go ahead and create prompts and it gives you a bunch of different examples. And it also lets you understand things a little bit differently. So it gives you some prompting options here. So you don't always have to know what to type in this prompt area. I really like this view prompt option. It gives you a bunch of options for creating, understanding, and asking the document any questions. And if you click right here, view more prompts, there's this thing called Copilot Labs, which gives you more prompt ideas here that you could go ahead and select from here by just clicking them and it adds them to the prompt box. Next, let's look at Microsoft PowerPoint and Copilot Pro here could create an entire slideshow with one text prompt. I think this might be my favorite part of Copilot Pro if you create a lot of presentation using PowerPoint. So go to the Home tab here and you should have an icon here for Copilot. Open this up and here, let's go ahead and create a presentation. And here's the simplest text prompt, create an investor presentation about my e-learning platform, Skillip AI. Let's see what we get. And this is my very first time using it so far. And let's see our slides. It's not too bad, very plain kind of a design, but it's done a good job here, giving us everything we need. 
And we also have access to designer here. We've always had this one, but this lets you quickly make any changes to a design of a specific page. So I could click like this and I could go ahead and quickly see different variations. I actually like this one the best. Now, the one thing you can't do just yet is it looks like you can't edit an entire presentation using the prompt here inside of Copilot, but you could go ahead and create presentation. You could add a slide about a specific topic here into an existing presentation, or you could ask questions about this presentation here as well. And you also have those view prompts that we looked at this time. It's a little bit different than Word. So you could create, edit, and ask, and you still have access to Copilot Labs. But as you can see, this gives you a whole new set of ideas here for PowerPoint that were a little bit different than what we had inside of Microsoft Word. Now let's try Copilot inside of Excel. This is a little bit limited here. I'm using the web version of Excel this time just to show you. So this doesn't have dark mode here, but let me press Copilot right over here. So you usually see this icon in the same spot in all the application, even the online version of these applications. And here, this says it only works with Excel tables. So we have a table right here. So let's go ahead and select some text here. And look at this, it gives you quick ideas on a prompt, you could ask it based on what you select. Show formula suggestions. Can I highlight, filter, and sort data? Let's click that one. And it's gonna give us some ideas. So bold the first column. Okay, there we go. So you made all this bold here. It took a little bit longer than I would like though. So it would have been easier for that to actually happen manually. But let's go ahead and ask for insights. And this is interesting. It came up with this insight for us based on this one having the biggest difference. Again, a very simple chart that I'm looking at here and I could ask for another insight or all insights in this grid here. I could go ahead and view them and it created this entire new sheet for me with all those insights. So this could be really, really useful. I'm gonna make a deeper dive video once I get to use it a bunch more because I think this is one of the main reasons you may wanna to upgrade to Copilot Pro. I use PowerPoint and Excel or a version of those all the time. So having this Copilot is really useful. And Copilot Pro is also inside of Outlook if you use Outlook for your emails. Little icon right up here, draft with Copilot so you could click on that and then you could give it a prompt and it will write the email for you. And I notice inside of Outlook is super fast. So here's an email and then you could keep it. You could go ahead and discard it and start from scratch or you could go ahead and generate and it will give you another version. And they also have this other option called coaching with Copilot. So you could type in at least 100 characters to get started with an email and it will basically auto complete it for you. So this is a useful option. Typically you don't want the AI to write the whole email for you, at least not yet. So this will help you basically get things started quickly. Now, if you're a GPT plus user like me, this is a little bit of a hard decision. Do you stick with GPT? and also pay for Copilot Pro because Copilot Pro gives us GPT-4, it gives us Dolly. We have a lot more that we could use this. We don't have those limits. Now I've upgraded to GPT Teams. That's helped me a lot. But now if you use Office, Microsoft Office, all those products, well, that might be alone a good enough reason to just pay for Copilot Pro. I'm gonna pay for both, but it's really up to you what you wanna do at this point, but I'll make more follow-up videos as I get more experience here with Copilot Pro from Microsoft. Now, because Copilot uses GPT-4, I did make a video covering how to correctly prompt GPT-4 using what OpenAI actually released for their prompting guide. So watch that video next. That could work with Copilot and it could work with ChatGPT. I'll see you then.